Hello everyone, this is Dr. Guzman. I am the department chair for Temple College Diagnostic Medical Sonography uh, Department. And it's a pleasure for me to have you uh, here today listening to our informational. We will be going over a lot of things and what it capacities uh, to be able to apply and uh, how the program is held throughout the two years. We are very proud to say that our uh, program has been in existence for more than uh, uh, currently 10 years and uh, has been considered one of the top elite uh, 50 programs uh, in the nation. Currently, we are one of the best and uh, we provide our sonographers uh, as we graduate from our program with the latest in technology and how to utilize physics to become the best they can be. Our program uh, here at Temple College is uh, approved under SACS, which is the College Southern uh, Commission of College of Southern Associations and Schools. And also we are approved by KHAP, which is a programmatic accreditor. Uh, currently we are under the concentrations for general concentration, which means all the abdominal and uh, small parts and things like that, and including musculoskeletal. And then we have vascular concentration. Uh, nowadays, there are uh, plenty of jobs in high demand for those in vascular concentration, and our sonographer students, they come out with the capacity of performing in both and sitting for both exams. So we all think about what is sonography itself. Uh, diagnostic medical sonography is, as the word comes from sono, which means it's uh, from a sonar. So think about having a medical sonar sending a sound beam right into the human body, bouncing it back. But rather than looking at submarines and looking at fish, we are able to see different organs, uh, muscle uh, tissue, nerves, and even vessels. It allows us to uh, help uh, get images to diagnose uh, some type of disease or lesions that could be seen. And as a sonographer, you will be able uh, to be part of the elite team within the diagnostic arena in sonography. A lot of times as a sonographer, uh, it, it's very cumbersome, which means is that our program, you say two years, uh, it goes by rapidly. Uh, and normally in other countries, you would have to be a physician. And after a physician, you would have to get a specialty in sonography, which means is that what other countries uh, might take them eight, 10 years, 12 years, we are trying to condense as much as we can in two years to get you ready there. So there's a lot of liability uh, that comes with a position as a sonographer. A lot of you is probably thinking about how much money a sonographer can make. An average salary is about $48,000, $96,000. Here in Central Texas, I would say is somewhere in between that forty eight and ninety six. dollars uh, But the way you got to take consideration is the more credentials you have, the more uh, is your ability to uh, increase that pay rate. Uh, however, uh, if you're trying to get into the field just because of the money, uh, you will burn out. And we have uh, the ability while we're doing interviews for those selected for an interview process, uh, before getting into the program to detect those that are in for the money rather than uh, doing it for the patient. That you can see uh, here that our faculty members are observing to ensure that you are uh, adjusting the knobs and using physics accordingly to get the best image possible. Uh, at the beginning of uh, your first uh, semester, uh, pretty much the faculty members will be surrounding you uh, to ensure that you get the perfect hands-on skill and ergonomic uh, posture uh, to scanning and really apply the physics knowledge into the scanning uh, mode. Image here of uh, the monitor which the patient or the student sniper could observe while it's being scanned uh, so that we have multiple capacities of capacity of uh, seeing the image in multiple uh, displays to allow a better understanding of what has been scanned. 
So the whole question is that do you really have what it takes? I mean, normally a sniper does not work Monday to Friday, nine to five. It all is going to happen is that you will have to find a job and it depends on the demand. If there appears to be a high demand, then you might have more chances of getting that job Monday to Friday, nine to five. But as there is less demand and there's more saturation in the market and you are the one coming in, you will have not uh, accrue any seniority yet. So you most likely maybe work second shift, third shift, uh, work even weekends, pull more call. And, and that's the price that we pay at the beginning when we get into the field. So consider, sir, you're lucky if you find a job Monday to Friday, no call, nine to five. Uh, DMS is a very difficult program. Uh, you need a very strong support group, and I'm talking about family, friends. You will not have a life for the next two years once you get accepted into the program. Uh, it requires a lot of support, a lot of help. You're going to be reading continuously day and night, and uh, you will not have a really uh, opportunity to do not really have the opportunity to do things that you normally do uh, at this time. So what are the expectations? We expect you to be coming ready into the classroom already, uh, read uh, all the information and imaging and, di and different uh, pathologies, assignments, uh, ready for going into the laboratory. So in that way, we can uh, be there to support you and also challenge you and to guide you. Uh, it's very important that you keep up with uh, the speed and the amount of information that is uh, being imparted on you uh, to become a sonographer. You see, a lot of you might be coming from a non-medical field, and even those that are coming from a medical field, you will have a conversational amount. So there's no uh, break if you say, like saying, if I've been in the medical field before, it's going to help me. It might only help you only probably at the beginning for the first couple of weeks. After that, pretty much everybody's even uh, when it comes to that. So we are going to put our all our uh, faculty, and including myself, uh, we are going to be uh, working hard with you and uh, ensuring that you get the material and be able to uh, get scanned. One thing we have to think uh, in our mind is that, as just as a painter, not everybody is skilled uh, to sonography to be able to do that, but... Uh, the only way to figure that out is having you being accepted and getting through the first semester and at the laboratory to see if you have that skill within uh, yourself. Um, so as, as sometimes we have students that are 4.0 and they're completely qualified and really knowledgeable and they're, they would have been the perfect sonographer. The only thing is that they don't have the gift. So sadly to say, we don't we don't have any tools, or I don't know anybody in the United States that have developed a tool to be able to recognize individuals that have that skill that we're looking for until we get into the laboratory to figure that out. Uh, so we never know until you get done through that semester. And sure, they ask a lot of questions when you don't have an understanding on the material and. Uh, you have to ensure also to follow the policies that are written in different uh, student handbook and the sonography student handbook and also policies and regulations of the hospitals where you're going to be rotating. So requirements for an uh, applied associate of science in diagnostic medical sonography, you're going to be uh, completing uh, 65 semester credit hours, uh, which those uh, you're going to have 41 semester credit hours that are going to be core classes of the DMS uh, program. You must maintain a 2.0 or better. And it's highly recommended that you already have your requisites uh, completed prior to starting the program because, like I said, there is a very high demand uh, when it comes to studying and scanning, laboratory, didactic classes, so you will not have really a life. And having more classes on top of that, well, it is even more demanding. So apparently you will have no time to sleep. So requirements to an advanced technical certificate in diagnostic medical sonography, uh, you would have to have completed uh, your either associate, bachelor, or master degrees. And uh, you would have to complete the college algebra, your physics, which contains sound waves, and composition one, and anatomy and physiology one. Uh, the only difference here is that uh, we 
don't give you uh, multiple degrees when you already have a degree and all you have to do is uh, complete a certain amount of credits and you already have the core classes already completed with another degree so that's how you end up with an advanced technical certificate rather than having that associate in applied sciences we have the capacity for sit for the board 60 days prior to graduation now with the ability of having standing two programs one vascular technology and one in general sonography the vascular program uh, starts uh, a little bit right after uh, second semester and then it ends somewhere in the fall semester so it's a whole year and it has the ability uh, to for you to sit for the vascular exam and we are the only uh, program in the United States that is uh, able uh, to have the students working uh, while finishing the general program so do and understand that there are two programs so you apply for the general you get into the general and once you're into general program then you apply for the vascular technology program and if you get accepted then you sit for the vascular technology while you're still in the general because you have completed the whole year of the vascular and and that will allow you to work as a vascular technology just and still uh, doing completing your competencies on your general uh, program so you can see you would have to sit for your physics exams you also besides taking the vascular sit for the abdominal and you sit for the ob gyne and if you have any other time you might see for the pediatric now later you would have to do a 800 breast uh, cases to be able to uh, afford to sit for your breast examination so what is involved in a DMS education? So you're going to have to uh, go into the classes. And that means you're normally either spending the whole entire morning uh, going uh, taking the classes and then the afternoon being in the laboratory, or you're going to do that vice versa. So you might do the laboratory in the morning and then the afternoon spend it in uh, didactic classes. So you don't spend pretty much Monday to Thursday. And at the beginning, you are uh, advised, it's not mandatory, uh, to attend some open labs to allow you to understand and get a better acquainted with the ultrasound equipment and trying to improve uh, your scanning skills. So laboratory might be offered inclusive on a Friday, even a Monday, and even a Saturday. So it all depends on the demand of the student. So we'll teach you how to scan and uh, visual pattern recognition, what is normal, and then, you know, if you know the normal and doesn't look right, you know that there's some type of pathology. Most important thing in, in the DMSL program is that you have to have patient care. That's number one. Uh, communication between your patient and staff is uh, definitely. So what happens when you are inside of the, the ultrasound program? So the first year you'll be taking... Uh, basic ultrasound physics and Doppler physics with Dr. Hamilton. And later after that, you will take introduction to sonography, abdominal pelvic sonography, and section anatomy sonography, and techniques, techniques of medical sonography, and sonography of abdominal pelvic pathology. And this will be given by uh, Miss Lisa Perry. Later after that, you will have clinicals. So a clinical starts exactly the second semester once you have passed your examinations within the laboratory your first semester because the first semester you're not going out you're uh, being trained to make sure that you have the minimal entry uh, capacity before you do clinicals on the outside world um, then later you will have introduction to vascular technology i will be the one giving you that class in the second year it moves immediately right into summer your first summer um, you got sonography and obstetric and gynecology, which cover uh, approximately like 14 chapters in 11 weeks. That's so pretty, pretty fast. Uh, moving in there, you're moving into the fall uh, semester where you have sonography of high risk and you got neurosonology. We actually cover the whole pediatric book. And we have in your last semester, you have sonography of superficial structures, advanced sonography practices, and we highly concentrate in you. Uh, uh, passing those boards.
So we had the majority of our students uh, passing the physics uh, right within the first year uh, entry. And then right after that, within the, the second fall, they'll be uh, attaining their vascular credential. And right after that, they'll sit for the abdominal beginning and if they got time, they'll sit for the pediatric. So uh, we're one of the few programs on my state in the United States that are smart for students pass their boards prior graduation with multiple credentials, not only one, but numerous credentials. The DSBT core course is meaning the vascular technology program. It starts in spring. So you, you had your first class in fall and then you start your first uh, semester doing uh, clinicals. So you also, besides having the general course and you've been accepted into the vascular technology program, you'll be taking also in line introduction to vascular technology and also principles of vascular technology, which is uh, held in the laboratory. When it comes to summer that you are doing the general courses of uh, obstetric and gynecology, you also will be taking non-invasive peripheral sonography and non-invasive cerebral, and you also have a practicum concurrent with the other practicum of the general uh, curriculum. When approaches into fall, you will uh, be taking your high risk and uh, you also will take neurosynology and you will be taking advanced vascular sonography and also the practicum and the practicum for the general. So it's very cumbersome for those folks that are planning to take uh, the general uh, curriculum and also uh, the vascular technology, but it's worth it. So you're thinking about, ah, oh, this is easy. The machine does everything for me. No, the machine does not do anything for you. You will have to uh, learn how to use physics and how to apply it on the machine to get the best image possible. So these are a few calculations as you can see on how much math is involved. And then you say, but how can I manage my time? So normally classes are between six to 14 hours a week, depending on the semester. And laboratories are between three to six hours a week. In open lab, two, six hours or even more sometimes. Your clinical and practicum could last about 24 hours a week, depending on the semester. And if you're an average reader, it takes about 20 hours a week of studying plus or minus a couple hours. So it's highly recommended that you do not work. I cannot mandate you don't work, but it's highly recommended that you don't. So clinical sites, we are connected currently with Baylor Scott and White. And when I say this, I mean that here in Temple and all the way to College Station. Uh, we also are connected uh, with Seton uh, uh, up in Hillcrest. Uh, we are here with uh, Children's and uh, the VA here at Temple College, near Temple College. And we also, uh, we have the Women's Center at Waco where we send uh, rotating our students to learn 3D and 4D obstetric and gynecology high risk. <clears throat> And we have other uh, settings that uh, to expose our students to different modalities and different type of testings. So you got to take in mind that the Temple College will determine what days and what times you're required to be at the clinical site, and you cannot deviate from the schedule. So in the clinical sites, we're going to have different individuals that are pretty much overseeing what you do, and they kind of polishing you at the hospital level and how to deal with patients and how you uh, apply everything that you have learned here at the school. They're called clinical preceptors. Do remember that you're going to be the guest of the clinical site and you must treat that clinical site as an interview that is going continuously as long as you're going. A lot of our students get hired immediately by our uh, clinical sites and it's based because of the attitude and the knowledge that they have. Questions that they ask is they ask us, uh, what is the attitude of the student? And if there's any issues in attendance and also if they have ability to scan. But if you think about scanning the place uh, that you've been scanning, they already know how you're scanning. They pretty much know your attitude. They just want to find out uh, if you tend to classes on time and all that. So they make sure that you are a well-rounded individual before hiring. So dress clothes for class and clinical, you might think about the uniform must be cleanly pressed, no hair dangling on it, fingernails not looking like Godzilla. 
and then also you really do not look like Mr. T. Makeup did not look like Bozo the Clown. Now you think about in the medical field. So we have to be very regulated to protect our patients and also to protect our personnel. And that's one of the reasons why we have a lot of rules and policies in place. So who writes these rules and who cares about them, right? Well, we got a lot of different uh, entities that are in charge of doing those things and ensuring and protecting both sides. But you go like, well, who really cares about following rules and regulations? Because we could do whatever we want and please. Oh, so you think so, right? We must protect our patient and protect ourselves. If you don't do that, then we have some individual called a patient's lawyer. That person ensures that whatever negligence or any malpractice doesn't take place or form again. A Doppler. And then basically here, what we use in the medical field is we are able to isolate vessels, tissues, and things from things like that. Uh, this right here is a carotid. If you touch yourself in the neck, there'll be something pulsating there, and that's your carotid, that either right side or left side. In this situation here, we're able to see there appears to be a little placking and right after the placking, as the flow is moving through it, we're able to see there appears to be some turbulence. And if you look at Doppler weather, maybe some turbulence in the weather too, right? So this is power imaging and uh, doing an assessment of the carotids that could be seen in here. More pattern recognition, but as you can see, we could do a cor uh, correlation between the image and the uh, 2D image and we cut a flow and uh, appears to be some placking here, uh, some placking there, and then we cut it and it looks like a little piece of bacon, uh, non fried, but it's right there. And now you can see the placking there associated and correlative with the image that we have seen previously with sonography. So it's kind of cool. Now, one of the things that we have to learn also is uh, neurosonography, which we do the whole baby. Uh, these are some of the landmarks that you need to learn while you're coming to school, that's uh, more uh, information you have to learn. And we got also vascular systems, uh, circle Willis, as you can see there. And this is a circle Willis, how it appears to be in a little baby head uh, inside uh, the mother. Uh, as you can see here in the picture imaging is the anterior placenta, appears to be nice, grade zero, zero uh, beautiful and smooth. Uh, and this little artery is gonna be seen there. And the fox right going right through the middle. So you have an opportunity uh, how to display it in an anatomy. It looks one way. And when you look at an ultrasound, it looks completely different. Uh, you're going to have to that. We're going to teach you that. Other thing that we learn is that there appears to be different uh, variables when we're scanning. You see circle Willis in this. Uh, for example, you might have different variations. And you're like, oh, that one is atritic. Or one is uh, completely atritic. And then all is partial. And you're going to have to be familiar with that. So we got uh, different ways that we scan the brain. And this is a baby brain that is uh, already outside. So we've got a little pericolosal artery right there and uh, cisterna magna. And uh, we can see the Doppler waveform that. Well, let's see what's happening here with this slide. Apparently the slide is uh, taking a little longer than uh, expected. Uh, cardiovascular system. So we have to learn also, uh, besides your basic anatomy and physiology, how this anatomy and physiology changes from an embryological uh, fetal state and then once they become uh, uh, a newborn and come outside and certain things happen, uh, how that circulation completely changes. You can see here the cardiovascular system of uh, uh, fetus uh, is completely different than an individual or a kid that is outside the womb, right? So we have to uh, learn that. We also uh, talk about embryology and uh, talking about embryology, we talk about different parts of the body and this situation in the picture uh, that have been depicted and at this moment is the heart. Uh, you're able to see how uh, you have uh, the cushion forming and all that and creating little septations and uh, the leaflet valves, and then you have uh, rotation to form from the greater vessel to your aorta and also your pulmonary trunk that crisscross each other. Uh, and we'll learn different pathologies. 
So there is more to obstetric sonography than uh, just a beautiful, wonderful 3D picture of a cute little child with soft tissue rendering. Uh, we keep looking at oh, look at beautiful baby smiling, and that's why I'm going to get in the field. And uh, it's just a gorgeous experience. Uh, and I will not say it is not a gorgeous experience. It's an amazing experience. Their main reasons that we do is because we're in a diagnostic field. And as in the diagnostic field, our main uh, uh, purpose is to find and ensure that that baby's okay. And if it's not okay, you must find what is wrong with that child and hopefully bring it uh, uh, in front of the radiologist and show what you have found. And then we proceed into uh, treatment and uh, what we're going to do with the child. Uh, this uh, situation here, we can see that this is not a normal uh, baby, right? That just newborn here. We have uh, an uncle seal uh, encapsulated, as you can see, and that could be visualized here in the 3D image. So a 3D and 4D image is really good for us to uh, help us delineate much better our pathology. Uh, in this situation, we have a cyclope here, and we have a proboscis, which is the nose. You don't see it. You see it right in top uh, and uh, superior to the eyeball. So you can see it, and they're very close. Uh, you can see that in the image right here. So this is how it correlates into the real world. Uh, worst case scenario is having a baby without a head. So this is anencephaly. So you can see the baby doesn't have a head. It has an appearance what we call the frog face. And uh, frog face is seen right there, no depiction of any portion of the superior top of the head itself. So these are the things that we see in the field, and everybody thinks that all we do is jelly belly, and it's such an easy thing to do. Uh, it's not such an easy thing to do, because you have to know anatomy, physiology, pathology, and how it's displayed to an ultrasound. And besides being displaying an ultrasound, uh, to be able to depict it, get the best picture possible. Everybody has a different body habitus. And on top of that, we uh, uh, have to be able to control our environment with the patient, which has uh, a lot of nervousness and uh, going through a lot of traumatic experiences if uh, we have a, some type of uh, bad disease or diagnosis coming up. So you got to keep your, your cool. You got to uh, be able uh, to transmit transmit that coolness to your patient and uh, at the same time uh, keep concentrated while you're doing the scanning and get all these images to the radiologist so that way this could be uh, read by the radiologist and then given to the ordering physician and then having the ordering physician talk with the patient if necessary. So it's uh, hard work. So we got more images here in prophecies right here and you can see other pathologies. So do you have what it takes, really? You have to have a lot of compassion for patients. Uh, it says here, CNA worth an addition of five points of rubric. Uh, once, uh, for those individuals watching this, uh, you would need to call uh, Miss Jane Johnson uh, or send her an email. And then that, uh, once you do that, you'll be able uh, to get an application form with the rubric to allow you to uh, apply. Now, do remember, you must have the prerequisites that were previously mentioned uh, prior application. So estimated program costs. So our costs are not that expensive when it comes in relation uh, to other programs across the nation. Some programs are about 45, 50,000, 55,000. Uh, and, and very low cost program where you would say be 30 to 35,000 hours is not even that near, as you can see, our prices. So when I talk about concealed carry weapons, our DMSO laboratory does not allow, we are exempt of carrying concealed weapons. And the reason is because you lay in there, they may have a barrel facing at the person who's scanning. So we don't want to be uh, surprised looking at the barrel while we're scanning the uh, You have to take in consideration admission deadline. Uh, and it says here by hand at noon by May 6th, uh, this uh, due to uh, this situation that we encounter at this given time, uh, date up to the moment still remains the same, but your application might be submitted via uh, Dropbox email at the department, which will be on the website. You ensure that you have completed that whole application uh, that you're submitting online. 
and original sealed copies of the transcript from our institution will be uh, submitted to the admission records. At uh, this given time, all you need, you need to send us yes, non-official. So you could also submit it electronically uh, to that drop box. If you're currently enrolled in a prerequisite or prerequisite class, please ensure that your instructor will email me or Ms. Jane Johnson by May 1st to know what is your grade so we can put it in the rubric to pre-qualify you for an interview. Once, if you pay, make it through the interview, you would have approximately two weeks to be able to get all the medical information that is going to be requested. And now this is the time of questions. If you have any questions, please send us an email uh, and ask uh, clearly uh, what, uh, if you have any concerns of how many people get into the program. Well, if it comes to that portion, we say is based on the quality of the students, uh, the biggest groups that we ever had. Students. And uh, we had them as small, I believe, of six students. So. Uh, it all depends on the quality of the students. So uh, we look forward uh, to you applying for our DMSO here at Temple College. Uh, wish you the best of luck and keep moving forward and never look back. Good luck.